Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan 91's Garage. This week, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Started off playing with the turbo manifold, ended up playing with an exhaust. So before we finally weld the outlet pipe for the turbo to the manifold, we're gonna need to know where all the other components are gonna sit in the engine bay for clearance, and also to know actually where from point A to point B needs to actually go. So this is what I did this week. Hope you enjoy the video. So a bit more progress. Ground down the central weld on this because obviously when we fit the uh, polished up saddle turbo outlet it's going to need to sit flat on there and now I can sort of slide it around and tilt it and angle it wherever I need to whereas before obviously a built up weld it was uh, not able to be placed flush on the pipe. Also took the top off of this weld because it was sticking out by about 5 or 6 mil and was like the ugliest one on there. Um, swazzed it off simply because I nearly tripped over it in the dark last night, it was that big. And uh, now it has been porosity checked so we know that all the welds are good so that's cool. Um, now we're on to building up the turbo, obviously when this goes on we're going to want to put this in position so we also need to find out where the exhaust downpipe's going to come from so bought some studs so Subaru genuine turbo studs probably cost about as much as the uh, turbo did to produce but yeah 10 by uh, 1.25 these are they fit in there nice not sure if they're exactly the right year for this turbo but they fit in there perfectly and uh, now we can put the plate on bolt that up so then we have the plate the correct distance plus the outlet and all that stuff so we're not forgetting anything when we're trying to work out sizes and positions I'm going to use nickel anti-seas on them because nickel goes up to 13, 15 degrees C, whereas aluminium anti-seas only goes up to about 870 for these particular brands. Um, so nickel for high temp, aluminium for where copper isn't suitable and copper for everything else because it's cheap as chips. But you have to be careful because copper shouldn't really be used on stainless because it can cause galling. None of this is stainless, but it's just simply not high enough temp. So studs are in, nipped them up with the double nut method so they're just a bit tighter than hand tight taped up the back of our flange so at least that way there's no crap going in it so on that pops you see it fits the turbo really well here not so well here but then if we look at the Subaru one later you'll see it doesn't really fit here but fits here really well so so when we go with our plate thankfully that sits far enough down so that's those all nipped up just do them finger tight just to hold it on. Really all I wanted was the flange plate on there. Obviously that's going to add sort of 10 or 12 mil. And now it's blocked up so there's nothing going in the turbo while we're playing with it. So that's on there. And we'll also be able to play with the pipe coming out of here and know where we're going to need to dodge the bolts plus the thickness of the plate for clearance when we're fitting it to the car. So now it's time to take the bumper off. That way we'll have better access when we're playing about with the turbo through the front of the car and also be a bit easier to film. So it's not a particularly difficult process. So three, two, one, here we go. Here we go, easy peasy. So obviously when we turbo the car, we're gonna need to get an oil feed. So there's a few ways you can do that. You can take out the oil pressure switch, but then what you've gotta do is put in a T-piece, attach that back into the end and then tee off of that for, for your oil line. The position of this one isn't great for that really because by the time you've teed into it and put the metal T piece, you'll be sort of sticking out over here. You've got the uh, clutch slave cylinder hard line here as well that may or may not be in the way, although the, the angle could be good. But also the, uh, the cable from the uh, sort of sensor plug might not actually reach because you're coming away from where the loom wants to be. So if you're going to do that, most people use, I think it's called MWR, I'll put a picture up now anyway. And that's for, uh, it's like a remote sort of oil line. Basically comes out of the block as just the line and then comes over and you can put it up over out of the way on, a, on the end of this hose essentially that then has the T-piece in it. So you can put the original sensor back in that and then tee off of that to go and feed your turbo sort of from above. The other way of doing it is obviously with an oil filter sandwich plate that uh, attaches to the engine block and then you put your filter on top of that. We're going to whip this off today and then put the uh, adapter plate in, see how close we get, because he's already quite close to this anyway. So we've got that to try out. I've got myself a D1 spec. It's three quarter UNF by 16 thread. So this adapter bolts onto where the oil filter normally would, and then the oil filter 
screws onto this extension piece. So obviously that bit bolts onto the to the block and then the mail's there to take the filter. And you obviously bolt this through here, which clamps on the, uh, clamps on the sandwich plate. It's quite a nicely made piece. It's really, really well machined and everything. Um, it's got an O-ring in the back, obviously, to seal as the uh, oil filter would normally to the block. It comes with two blanking plugs, obviously, and I've just put them in there to stop any dust or crap getting in the uh, in the engine. And then we've obviously got this one on the side here, which should take our feed, or you can take the feed off of any of these. I'll just put that one in there for today's mock-up purposes so we don't get any crap in the engine. Obviously, the oil flows up the side through these, gets filtered in the filter, and then back down the centre here before it's sent off to the uh, main oil galleries and uh, the crank, etc. So, yeah, we're going to pop him on today because... Obviously that's going to push the filter further out this way and as the filter's pushed out this way the uh, compressor housing for the turbo was sort of in the area so we're going to need to know where everything's going to be before we can decide where the turbo is going to be on the manifold itself. So that's the adapter screwed on, went on pretty easily, not, too, not any more complicated really than changing an oil filter so that's on there now and I've already tried him on there but he just clears by a fraction of a millimeter as you're screwing in there. And there we are. All nipped up. Clears the power steering pump just. It's gonna be fun changing the belt, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You could put a longer belt on, and to be honest with you, this piece here, just like the one on top, they don't really do anything. I mean, there's there's screw threads in them, so either something bolts to it or it bolts to something else, or maybe it's used to sort of help service and drive this plate in, I don't know. But uh, currently they don't actually do anything for the function on this particular vehicle. So worst comes to the worst, could quite easily chop that bit off, grind it down so it was flush, and then there won't be any problems anyway. But yep, she's on there, so now we can continue adding the manifold to see how much clearance we need for the turbo. The other thing to be aware of is also where your lines are going to be coming out of. So I only really need one line to come out of this. So I'm probably going to take this one here on the left because it's the most clear. You can sort of swing this around a bit, but then the, this uh, sort of exit on the side here is going to end up pointing up underneath the manifold and that's going to get pretty hot there. There isn't a huge amount of clearance. And this one here, if you're trying to screw in an actual pressure sender or something for a gauge, for example, that's going to rub on this uh, big protrusion that's on the block as well so yeah so far that's on there and it looks like we're going to get at least one of the ports usable okay so we we'll put the gasket on i don't know if you ever noticed this before but obviously it's a multi-layer steel gasket so there's two sheets was it three two sheets of steel there stainless and they're sort of crimped together but obviously on the back of this one of them is raised and one of them is punched through you want the raised side of that crimp to be facing the head because there's a pocket here that one side sits in, pocket here, and then a big gap in the middle where that sits. If you put it the other way around, some of the manifolds have clearance for this, some of them don't. The, N the NA manifolds don't have the clearance for this, so it's just a flat sheet of steel that then tries to bow this. So stick the lumpy bit on the engine side because there's relief for it. So we'll pop him on there. Like so. I've also made myself a little cardboard protection gasket as well because obviously the uh, the manifold's still a work in progress so the back of it might have a few sharp edges from where it's warped slightly in the corners so I figured a bit of extra protection here. I'm not going to wang it, wang it down too tight but uh, when that's on there obviously I don't want to force any sharp edges into a soft aluminium head because uh, that would be a, a bad thing so that's on there now. Now we can drop the turbo manifold on. a couple on it just to uh, stop it falling off on the floor. Sit rep, day one is beer time. So quickly, we've taken off the exhaust. This was a cheap ass eBay thing. That's off the car now. And we've built up the tuning developments three inch exhaust. I've already had it on the car once before, 
which is why I know that it's at least 30 mil short. So I've put in some of these caveman spacers just so we can get it to the right length. So what I've seen some manufacturers do is they use the front bolt holes on the bell housing to attach a plate to hold the downpipe or the bottom of the flange that joins to the beginning of the rest of the center exhaust. So I've tapped those out. They were 10 by 1.5, I believe, but they're really corroded obviously because they had nothing in them. So they're pretty corroded up. So now I can basically make a plate to bolt onto that, which I could then use to hold the front of the rest of the exhaust because obviously the exhaust is gonna be fitted under here on the NA Starlets. They have the front mounts in a different place. So those two rubber mounts there are where the traditional standard exhaust for bolt to on the NA, but further back down there, I don't know if you can see it, there's like another little post coming off the side. And that's where some sort of like bizarre breakaway strap attaches to, but it seems that that position is where they chose to mount the front mounts for the glanzer, which is just truly odd. So yeah, chased those out, um, mounted up my, that's the original sort of glanzer block brace. So obviously this is what the uh, catalytic converter is usually bolted to. So that obviously takes some of the strain and all the bouncing and extra weight off of the manifold and then the bosses on the head up here which if you're not careful they are prone to cracking though so you do have to be careful and make sure you brace everything properly so I'm going to put at least one brace to the stop position for the glanzer if I can if not I'll remove this and mount something here I'll also have the downpipe or exhaust braced onto this as well so yeah that's it it's time for a beer so We'll pick up with this thing in the morning. Okay, sit rep, it's the next day, it's very hot, and my garage is an absolute shithole. So we've gone off on a bit of a tangent at the moment. Obviously this is the exhaust I'll be fitting for the turbo conversion, and it's never really been on the car properly because obviously the mounts are different for the glanzer to the starlet, so there's never anywhere really to mount it at the front onto the original starlet mounting points. The only way it would mount before was when this was attached to the downpipe and obviously we don't have a downpipe so so before we decide where the final position of the turbo is going to be on the manifold i decided it was a good idea to get the exhaust to fit so then we would know where the downpipe had to go to so we'd know that perhaps you know if i'd shift the turbo over to the left a bit or the right a bit it would make an easier path for the downpipe rather than going oh we're gonna to have to go right around the houses for this so we're off on a bit of a tangent, but essentially I've popped out, got some more materials, and uh, if we can salt the centuries old manual here. So a while ago I had a bit of a scribble, so the idea is either to put some sort of U-bolt clamp over it, essentially with a metal plate across, and then some hooks to go onto the uh, rubber mounts that these cars always have. So the problem is, we're going to end up with that U-bolt. I've got these roughly lined up next to each other, but that U-bolt to get on there would have to bolt onto an angled section. Then everything would be at a, funny, at a funny angle and you'd have your posts slightly longer than the other. So essentially what we're going to do is if we line that up there, we're going to go with a plate that mounts off of the flange here. So we're going to bolt through that and then dog leg out with a couple of bits of pizza bar like this to essentially go up to the original rubber mounts that are on the Starlet NA models rather than the Turbo Glanzer ones, which are in the middle. So yeah, we've got a bit of work to do. So we'll have both ends of what the turbo needs to attach to on the vehicle. It's always, it's always best if you can to have them both in situ that way you know you can go from this point to that point so i'm going to start chopping up some metal i'm not going to bore you with the process of it i'll show you the thing when it's done and we'll go from there so this is as far as i've got with the front mount for the exhaust pipe essentially this is going to bolt to the exhaust and then it's going to have the two sort of rods coming off of it that then go to the rubber hangers that sit on the car so that's as far as i've got this week by the time you see this next, this will be all welded up, attached to the exhaust, and we'll be ready to put it on the car. Thanks for watching as always, guys. My name's Dan, this is Dan91's Garage. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode.